compared to the blue area of the moon. An area that, for some reason, you can breathe without a spacesuit. Nearly kills everyone around her just by yelling stop, while Tony Stark builds a magical transformer to attack the Phoenix. There you go, Marvel's out of ideas. There's only one scene with the gun, no one actually gets shot. Rebooted into a more uh, grimy character with the new 52. Hey, I'm Eric for Comic Pal, and once again I'm here to talk about Avengers vs. Consequences. We're on to issue number four, which is the penultimate issue. Um, we have a new artist once again, Mark Brooks, and uh, we still have Kieran Gillen as the writer. Now this issue um, was, uh, to me, a good issue. Um, um, Kieran Gillen continues to do a good job, but um, not as... Um, excellent as the um, for the first three. Uh, with the first three, um, Kieran's really exploring a lot about where Cyclops is, how he's evolved, where he's gotten, how he justifies his actions. Um, this one uh, moves on a little more to a lot of the other X-Men. Now, that in and of itself is not a bad thing. And like I said, Kieran does a really good job writing it and doing it, and um, everyone stays um, true to character. Um, but it just makes for a less a less interesting book, a more generic style book. <coughs> um, now the um, the book picks up with um, Tony Stark and uh, Scott Summers talking, and uh, essentially um, Tony again. This is a thread that kind of came in towards the end of Avengers vs X Men, where he being a huge man of science and now he's kind of like whoa there's this mystical entity and I couldn't solve it and and eventually I did by thinking about magic and so on and so forth and so um, kind of reconciling the rational with the mystical and um, I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure that Kiron is moving on to Iron Man as one of his books um, so I could see him here as setting up a potential um, a potential internal conflict that he's going to explore with Tony Stark. Uh, we'll see what happens going forward uh, with Iron Man. Um, but basically, he wants to run some tests on Scott because Scott was uh, a Phoenix. He's there in jail, whereas the other Phoenix Five are missing. And so he's able to run tests on him. Um, we also go through and see uh, where Colossus is. Um, <clears throat> remember in the last issue... A magic told Storm uh, where Colossus was, and we kind of get an understanding of why she did that now. Um, and uh, we also have a great scene with uh, Namor and Hope. It reminds me a lot of the recent um, Fantastic Four, where um, Doctor Doom mentioned that uh, he was a god but found it beneath him. And uh, we get a similar line here with Namor saying, you know, um, I was, I was, I felt small and out of control and I, I didn't like it, you know, something to that, to the effect, which I thought was great. Uh, Namor uh, remains true to himself. Um, and, uh, basically, um, the other thing is I was wondering what was going to happen with, um, Scott's protege in jail. And, um, that also, um, comes to a head in this issue. So, um, now I'm going to move on to a few spoilers. So, again, um, if you haven't read the books yet and you intend to read it, um, go read it and come back. Or continue if you don't mind spoilers. So, um, basically, the first spoiler is that um, um, Scott's protege um, dies. Um, those guys that have been after him uh, for a few issues now, <clears throat> um, they, they kill him in jail. And... Um, it was pretty interesting because at first I wasn't sure was he going to be a, a reader avatar asking all the questions that we want answers to or was he going to end up becoming a new X-Men that kind of had this insight from Scott from in prison. Uh, so it's interesting to see that, that they've killed him, but it seems to serve the purpose of furthering uh, where Scott ends up. Now, um, um, the other interesting thing, and I've mentioned this in the previous uh, video reviews, is that... Um, Avengers vs. X-Men and Avengers X-Men Consequences seems to be all about returning X-Men to the status quo before 
um, before M Day. So we've got Sentinels, we've got um, mutants that are evil, uh, you know, an uncanny. Um, um, Avengers, we have that mutant that's causing trouble um, under the influence of the Red Skull. Um, and uh, we've got the Hellfire Club back, and we've got all these things going on that seem to be returning to status quo. And in this book, it um, looks like we've got Magneto going back to being a villain. Um, and that's uh, I, I, it's pretty interesting. Uh, it all makes sense, and I think that's the, the most interesting part about it, that they're able to do a reset but without doing it as clunky of a way as DC did. Um, they're, they're getting everything back to the way it was, but but it's, it all makes sense within the character motivations that they've had so far. And um, this also seems like a good setup as to why all new X-Men happens, why Beast goes back to get the, old, uh, the 1960s X-Men saying that Scott Summers wants to destroy the world. Um, it seems, as of this issue, like he's going to join Magneto in a new um, evil Brotherhood of Mutants. So, um, I think overall a great piece. Continues to set up a lot of stuff, but um, not quite as groundbreaking as the first few issues. So I'd give it four to five stars. Um, please let me know what you thought in the comments here on YouTube, uh, Comic Vine, or Comic Pal, wherever you happen to come across the video. Thanks.